this evening's session on mindfulness, awesomeness, positivity. Welcome to the Shoshin Temple and our community. We're about to enter the temple if you're here on the live stream. Please just get ready for this to be a time for yourself. If you're a meditator, step into a meditative state of mind. If you're a philosopher, become philosophical. So um, it was just a question of why do we ring the bell? Just the tradition we have here is we line up and one by one we enter. So as each person's entering, I just invite everybody to go deeper into your self and grab a seat. So we're going to begin this evening's session by setting our dedication. This is how do you want to dedicate this time. Hopefully this dedication that we make now, you can feel it throughout the whole session. And as I repeat this dedication, I hope you feel it in yourself. But if you want to rephrase something or you want to think of something else, you know, this is your time for you to make the most of it. So let's just take a deep breath in deciding that we're setting aside this time to make something special for ourselves, to step out of all old habits any feelings that don't serve us and make a space within ourselves to cultivate some new habits and some new feelings. And just given what I just said, is that something that's a little bit helpful, a little bit positive? Or maybe you'll make some new habits and feelings that are very helpful that are very uplifting, that are very inspiring. Maybe you'll even explore some habits and feelings that are life-changing and wonderful. So just take a moment to make that intention within yourself you know as we're talking about different philosophies or practices today are you going to envisage a little more peace or are you going to practice the most profound peace that you can imagine if we talk about kindness for others you're going to be a little more patient or are you going to Practice perfect patience. So, welcome everybody. I had two things in mind for this evening session. One was to explore 
mindfulness practice and explore cultivating positive feelings and just deepen our understanding of that, deepen the way that you feel empowered to do that. But also I want this session to really feel alive and awesome for all of us. So anything that's going on for any of you here or people on the live stream, any questions about life, about meditation, about emotions, I want to make this session as helpful for you as possible. So as I'm describing our class and our practices, please, anything that comes to mind, ask it, share it. We want to make this as as relevant for you and as engaging for all of us as possible. So why do we come to sit in a temple when we're taking time to make our life better? Any thoughts? Yeah, that's pretty much exactly the thought I was looking for. So yeah, it's this place of peace where we can step out of everything else. And that gives us freedom. Freedom to be peaceful. Freedom to think about things differently. And ultimately, I hope that we have all practiced that peace or spent enough time in peace and freedom that we will take that peace and freedom with you anywhere, anytime. So some of you have done the lake meditation with me where we dive into the lake and suddenly it's this refreshing calm and ultimately we want to be able to anytime we need dive into that peace or some of you have been practicing mindfulness meditation and in every moment of the breath you have this profound stillness and in deeper meditation you can you can find this place where all thoughts stop and anything that arises you just instantly let it go you just this total calm this total blank canvas And the more we practice that, the more we have that available in any moment we need. Even when you're caught up in something, if you've really practiced taking a breath with the intention of letting go, you're just really able to step into that no matter what. And some of us might really like using our imagination in our day-to-day life. So maybe being able to just close your eyes and take a breath and see the temple and remembering all the peaceful, empowering moments might be nice to have that idea that this temple, this peace, is just always there with you. So I just mentioned diving into a lake or stillness and mindfulness in our breath or being in our temple. These are all things that we can bring our attention into to be helpful in any moment we need them. But it could be anything that we can practice, that we can take into our life. You might have a favorite line of a song that you can just remember that suddenly just energizes you and makes you feel good. You might have someone that you hug or even giving yourself a hug that when you are in that moment, everything's okay. You might have a positive statement or a word that just 
brings your attention beautifully and perfectly into some feeling or state of mind. So practicing this goodness so that we can then take it with us into every moment of our life. I hope that's not just a helpful idea, but also you feel there's a really powerful idea that you can have calm or strength or joy or whatever you need, anytime you need. Now, one reason I want to emphasize the beauty of mindfulness meditation, the stillness of our breath, is that this blank canvas can help anytime, anytime. Say, for example, you've cultivated um, a song that makes you full of joy and laughter, and you can pull that out pretty much anytime. It just feels great. There might be some moments where that's not exactly the appropriate response or closing your eyes and imagining the temple as this peaceful place within you you might not always be able to close your eyes but we're always breathing and just being able to stop any thought and everything people find that from that stillness what's there is just the things you choose. It's just the wisdom. It's just the love. It's just seeing things clearly. So cultivating these positive things and having more of them in our life is awesome. And having this stillness that we can step into is also awesome. So that's our themes and practices for tonight is cultivating positive states of mind and attitudes and also cultivating mindfulness, watching the attention into stillness and having ever more powerful stillness. Any thoughts, feelings or responses to what I just shared? So, uh, who can relate to this? You know, we're aware that our minds and feelings do stuff and we can be mindful. Great. Some people aren't even aware of being mindful. They have a reaction to something and bam, they really are so caught up in it that they are sure that that's the way things are. When you've learned about mindfulness, you can be aware, oh yeah, Okay, that's my reaction I'm having. But have you ever noticed, oh yeah, I'm having that reaction. Ah, oh, but I, I still feel like having that reaction. Or I know I should calm down, or I should be kind, but I really don't want to. Can anyone relate to that? I saw a couple, I of, I a couple of nods. So, I like to think of it you know, there's so many metaphors we can use in a, of our mind. You know, there's there's different networks, f- parts of our of our neural brain. That's this part's active, whether it's being angry or being loving. There's like little trees that are really on fire. There's there's like activated parts. It's a it's a pretty uh, direct metaphor. But then you can also think of it as your mind is like an orchestra. And the brass section could be really just jamming away and being wild. Or the drum section could be going off. Um, And uh, another metaphor is you could think of each one of your thoughts as like a different train. You've got all these trains, trains of thought moving around your mind. And uh, mindfulness is kind of like being the uh what do you call the person who tells the trains when to stop and go maybe it's called the train conductor yeah um 
Or with the music analogy, mindfulness is like being the conductor of the orchestra, making one part more active or another part. Or if you think of it in terms of the neurons in your brain, mindfulness is having a part that is watching what the other parts are doing. And as as you practice mindfulness, your metacognition or the part that's aware of your awareness that gets bigger and better and it grows more neurons into different areas to be able to watch more what's happening. But then sometimes you're aware of what's going on, but blah, this other reaction just... That's more powerful than the awareness. And uh, this is why I want us to really practice powerful awareness. So if there was a button that you could push on all the trains and it would just put all the brakes on and all the trains would stop, even though trains are massive and they've got so much momentum, if you've just built a super brake that just stops all the trains, It's like a safety, so that nothing will crash. Or with the conductor analogy, you know, normally the the parts of your mind just play and you're like, oh, I'm going to put a bit more more love or a bit more happiness. Have you practiced a thing where it's like, stop. And... uh, Having this ability to just stop completely is a really amazing gift. It helps in moments that are intense, but it also helps more deeply than that. Can everybody see how it would help in moments that are intense? Maybe you've gotten upset or angry and... It just helps you kind of stop that reaction and be like, okay, what what do I really want to do now instead? I see some nods. Do I see a nod from everybody? Yeah. Now, being able to just deeply, completely stop is more than just helpful in those moments. It's helpful in your ability to think about yourself, to think about life. And how you want to be. Let me start with a, an example that probably we can all relate to. Let's just say thinking about kindness. Now everybody here is kind. And has some elements of kindness. And there's probably also some ways that some people act the way you get angry. And there's probably also some things about some some groups of people that you're frustrated with. And we can meditate on kindness. And we can grow the kindness. And the people where you love and the things that are happy and the ways that things are going easily. Yeah, it's, it's great to like create more happiness and kindness there. But while you still have that other stuff going on, you're not as free to imagine responding beautifully, calm to hard situations. You're not as free to just be like, what would it be like to have pure well-wishing and kindness for those people? And while it's true that doing longer love and kindness meditations and doing them more often the feeling of care just becomes more available and so we can then pour that onto the parts of our mind that um, weren't as loving if we also have this ability to just really be total stillness in our mind it just makes cultivating love and kindness so much easier And then the same is true. This ability to stop completely, to empower you. The same is true if you're thinking about being confident. You're going to be confident in every situation? Well, I hope while you imagine that, you've completely stopped the, the feeling of nervousness in that situation. 
or the, oh, what would those people think? And then the same's true with practicing sports skills. If you're visualizing being really coordinated and skillful at something, I hope while you're imagining it, you're purely imagining the skill without any of the um, unchosen skills. I mean, maybe you're all super talented, but for me, when I first started learning brain programming, I had a lot of thoughts of myself being bad at stuff. And imagining being better, it's good to just purely practice what you want, not practicing some of the old habit and some of the new. Now, I, I hope we can all think about many parts of your life, not just kindness, not just confidence, not just skills. Every different habit that we have, every different part of your life that you go into, when we think about being who we really choose to be or who we want to be, I hope that we're all really, really free, really liberated to imagine what you'd actually want to be, what you'd actually be feeling like. Not constrained by the old song that your mind was playing, not constrained by the old habits, but completely free. I'd love to hear people's Thoughts, questions, responses to what I just shared. Yeah, I have, I have a really tangible example about the um, the the skill thing, like picturing a skill. Um, was, uh, I was having trouble falling asleep, just like at night uh, last week, and i watched a couple of videos of monks and stuff talking about how to improve it and one of the pieces of advice was think about when you're trying to fall asleep how great your sleep is going to be and how rejuvenating it's going to be and how fast you're going to fall asleep and stuff like that and i realized that whenever i did have trouble falling asleep maybe i had a good, had a good five or ten minutes at the beginning where i was really trying but after that if it clearly wasn't working I'll all of my thoughts just went to how shitty it was that I couldn't fall asleep and how awful my next day was going to be and just how I didn't want to be where I was. And for the past week or so now, I've just been going in thinking this is going to be amazing sleep, I'm going to fall asleep quickly, it's going to be peaceful and restful and whatever, and it worked basically instantly. I mean, when we think about it, that's a, it's a pretty simple story being able to sleep well. But it's such a beautiful story. You know, sitting, lying in bed, feeling like, oh, this is shitty. It's something that a lot of people have. And just being able to rest well is a really wonderful transformation. And uh, the reason I say, oh, that's kind of a simple story is because there's so many parts of our life where a simple change is actually a really beautiful change. And if we can make those beautiful changes in many parts of our life, our life becomes so much more enjoyable and easy and beautiful. So, Fence, thanks for sharing. I also want to reflect on just how wild it is. You know, a lot of people, if they're like, ah, oh, I'm not going to get to sleep. This is going to suck. Rah. The idea of then imagining that you're going to sleep really well and restful, it's kind of mental gymnastics. To uh, step out of that other thought and then think something else or focus on something else. But as Fence said, this mental gymnastics, it works. It's, it's, I think it's amazing. To me, it's one of the most beautiful things in the world that we can shift how we focus and it shifts how we are. And so why am I mentioning or emphasizing this mental gymnastics is 
I, w- I want to empower every one of us to really be excited about mental gymnastics, really internalize the thing that, hey, we can step out of the thoughts or feelings that we're used to and try something else. And there are restful ideas. There are loving ideas. There are happy ideas. There's so many beautiful ways to enrich ourselves just by taking a different approach. Fence, did you like my response? Did that do it justice? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions about what we just said or responses to what I was saying before? Vice? Oh, I thought I saw you raise your hand. Let me check the live stream. So I, I keep checking on the live stream. So for those of you who are there, if you want to say hi or ask a question anytime, please do. Yes, please. So, um, I definitely have a idea of the person I would like to become. However, I think that in imagining that person, what I am imagining is kind of just maybe I like the idea of the person and enjoying the idea of the person uh, more than becoming them and on top of that I think that the habit or rather the habit that I have when I set a goal kind of is using the same habits as the ones that help me stray away from goals. What I mean by that is, um, by being pulled around by kind of impulse or motivation or even meditation, um, these kind of impermanent things, um, those are also the foundations of the goals that I want as well, or pretty impermanent. And so I've noticed uh, it kind of makes following a goal really difficult, or at the very least, uh, maybe even setting a goal that's uh, more realized makes it a little bit more difficult. What are your thoughts on that? Could you try to summarize that whole thing in one sentence, please? (laughs) I think that the way I create my goals is also negative to achieving them how does somebody how do you change that that's a good question um so i'm going to start with the simple answer which is i would start telling myself that i create goals in a way that however you want to finish the rest of the sentence i create goals in a way that is exciting, it's fun, it's uplifting, that's easy, that guides me in a way that I enjoy, that creates awesome success. I'd, I'd start imagining and telling yourself that your mind thinks in a way that's, that's easy and helpful. You know, I asked you to summarize what you'd said because it sounded like it was sort of tangled up and perhaps that's also how you've been thinking about these things. So maybe envisaging that your mind is to the point and it's easy. Um, and thinking about that from a complex state of mind, you're like, oh, but that doesn't... Uh. But it, it works. If you just tell yourself to be concise and in a way that feels good, your mind will figure that out. Um, so that's like, 
It might seem like a very simple answer, like how do you get your mind to make goals that help you, is to tell your mind to make goals that help you. But I actually really want to emphasize that for everybody. If there's an issue that you're having, try just telling your mind to directly solve that issue. And it's wild what our subconscious can do if it's given a simple, clear, easy idea. Now, Creek, the suggestions that um, I create goals in a way that is easy or fulfilling and inspiring, how does that sound? super helpful because I'd like to think I do that all the time the issue is is though um, hmm. so I'm going to give kind of a metaphor if somebody doesn't like working and really doesn't uh, enjoy being with other people um, and then given a couple years or even a couple days, they find themselves in a place of uh, maybe poverty and not surrounded by anyone and they're upset by it. So they actually achieved their goals. Um, the issue is, is I think, uh, what's a good way to put it? If they're making candy, it tasted sweet for just a second, but then the outlier afterwards was pretty painful. So it's not that I'm n not good at creating goals and achieving them. Maybe they just lacked pretty deep foresight. Okay, so is the issue that you want to create goals that actually are beneficial for you in the long run? So my goal is just to be spiritually actualized before I die. However, I'm used to, when I create a goal, imagining the perspective of myself having achieved it or doing it. I don't really know what it's like to be spiritually actuali actualized. So that sounds... So yeah. I don't know what that is. So anything that's abstract, I think it's good for us to define it and then as you describe the different aspects I think you could then set more precise goals is spiritually actualized being loving and kind at all times is it being mindful in every moment is it creating projects that contribute to the world with all of your creativity um, is it being able to go into deep altered states of meditation? Um, each one of the specific things I just said is something I think you also could envisage how to do it and work on it. Um, I, w I wonder what spiritually actualized means to you. And I think for you to clarify it for yourself will make this path a lot easier. You might even want to write it down. You know, get a piece of paper, write spiritually actualized at the top, and then just do dot points for everything that comes to mind. And then uh, for each one of them, I think it will be exciting, inspiring, and clearer what you want to do. Um, on a broader note, um, if you find yourself wanting something or struggling something, it can be good to check with yourself if what you're attached to or expecting is it abstract or do you know exactly what it is that you want. And by making things um, not abstract by really clearly think, thinking, what are the things I want here? Um, that can be so helpful. 
um, if if you can imagine what to do or how to act, your your brain then has some some way forward. Abstract ideas are never helpful, other than when they help us think about the specific things that we want. Actually, a little caveat there. Sometimes abstract ideas just let your imagination wander. And that can help you feel more free or feel more happy or more loving or more creative. But even then, ultimately that turns into a new feeling or a new perspective or a new work of art. So... Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double down on my statement that um, the things that really impact how we think and how we act and how we live are the the tangible, specific things. Um, abstract ideas can impact how we think, um, but it's it's risky, you know if. Uh, I've seen people have abstract ideas upon abstract ideas and then they just kind of get lost in their thoughts. Um, I've seen people have an abstract idea that um, some spiritual thing that then that makes them like good vibes all the time. They're positive and kind. But I've also seen people have an abstract belief that it just ends up confusing them about lots of things in life because they're trying to take this imaginary thing and see the world through a lens that's not real. So yeah, as much as possible, I hope our lens that we approach life is as real and engaging and actionable as possible. Now that could sound kind of dry. So I want to also say, like, I'm trying to inspire our imagination. So you can have a real practical approach that also dreams big that's also awesome you know elon musk is a super practical guy and he's building rocket ships to mars and tunneling machines to build underground networks like being real can be as awesome or creative as inspiring as you want some of you might not care about space at all that might have been a completely useless example but like think of the your favorite movie director or authors, or um, people who've created awesome events in your community. These are all real things that are also beautiful and inspiring and creative. So yeah, when I said practical, I, I just mean in the world, real things. But the scope for that is is limitless. Can I interject here? Please. feel like potentially what Creek was talking about is uh, relative reality and true reality, kind of the concept of ego and ego's impermanence, the fact that uh, this idea that we can kind of be separate from ego. This is something I've actually recently learned on my own uh, sort of semi-goenka uh, vipassana trip. and. One of the big things I learned is the concept that uh, ego is this thing that we can separate ourselves from, and that it it is something that we can mold and we can shape. And it sounds abstract, but when it comes down to it, we there's this relativity that there's real reality, and then there's true reality, as my ordained teacher has taught me. That is external reality and internal reality. Internal reality is sort of the physical world the, the the life that we have to live because there there are needs and there are desires and cravings that we do have that have to sort of be met but the external reality is the way things really are instead of the ways that we perceive them and because of this uh it is an idea there's a possible there's this idea that you can separate yourself from the ego and you can shape it and you can mold it and 
it's hard to explain because it's a very even a new idea to myself and it's it's weird because I, I've been ta uh, talking to my teacher and uh, every time I talk to her now it's almost like I don't want to say I or myself because it feels almost like this out of body experience because I'm saying well wait a minute isn't that just my perspective of things and you know when it comes to creating goals and things like that it's important to keep relative reality in mind but it's also important to keep the abstract external reality in mind as well and that's uh i can't remember the buddhist terms for them but i do remember learning about them uh can i can i just jump in for a moment Lama, who had mentioned it as well. um i just want to clarify it's important to keep can i ask you a couple of questions um one thing is, I've seen the word ego used in many different ways in different places, so I'm not actually sure what you mean. And you said that uh, the world around us is abstract. I wondered what you meant by that. So, when I say ego, I mean the sense of self, you know, the concept of what we are and how we see it. Uh, so, the way we are raised, the things that we're taught, the patterns that start up when we're first born, and, you know, the things that we learn going through life, what is good and bad, and stuff like that. But, so, when I say... So, you're not meaning, like, some people use ego to mean, like, selfishness, or... You're just meaning ego purely in the sense of self, no judgment around it. Exactly. Okay, good. And then what so, was the other part? And the idea of abstract reality is the concept it's hard to explain because it's more or less true reality when it's not looked upon by the ego which is sort of an impossibility because the concept of you're always going to be affected by your ego to some extent but you can mold your perspective of things differently based off of if you can learn to sort of separate the ego which is something I've been doing recently because uh, he mentioned uh, becoming what he wants to become, and that's something I've actually had to step back on and look into myself for. Because I realized, hey, I was running off of these cravings, I was running off these desires, these, these wants and these goals, and in a way, my ego was not being an advisor, it was running my mind, it was running off of animal instinct, this concept this idea that, oh, well, if these these things did not happen in certain ways, or if my expectations weren't meet, then I would have suffering. And I had to pull my back self, myself back and understand that, hey, I don't necessarily need these things. But the thing is, some things are still required, and that's kind of what relative reality is. It's important to, to make goals and to move along, and it's not going to prevent uh, spiritual acquirement, so to say, because it's important to have both, you know. It's important to have a balance of abstract and relative. So, I treat being more loving or kind or more mindful as real things. When I was saying abstract, we're using different words, uh, there's words in different ways here. Um, when I was saying abstract, I was meaning when the idea isn't something you can actually describe. And so maybe Crete can actually describe what spiritual fulfillment is. But the word spiritual fulfillment could mean anything to people. So it's by filling in the details that we know what we're actually talking about. Um, so responding to the way you described it, um, when I was saying about creating goals that are actually fulfilling, I was implying there to step out of our cravings and our past habits and try and find the things that are most wise and beneficial to all beings. But yeah, you just filled in a lot more of the picture than, of what I tried to say in that one sentence. Um, also, we were talking before about mindfulness, that ability to notice our mind and stop. 
And to relate that to the idea of, of ego or self-image as you described is uh, where we have all these patterns running all the time. These ways we think of ourselves, the way we think of others. And being able to just stop is a great way to step out of those things. When you get your consciousness to just be still, you look at things through fresh eyes. It's so much easier that when someone says, hey, look at it from this perspective, your brain's just able to see it from a different perspective or feel it in a different way. Um, Fence shared the story of the ideas of, oh, I can't sleep. And then, oh, what would it be like to just feel great about the sleeping? I'm guessing in those classes, there was also a meditative feel, like this feeling of like, hey, stop, let's take a different perspective. So it was like this stepping out of the old stuff and then this freedom to create something new. Um, so, yes, I think you and I are speaking exactly on the same page, just using slightly different words to approach it if I understood you correctly. Yeah, you did. It's just my, uh, my ordained teacher is a uh, Tibetan Buddhist, so maybe some of the terminology is kind of mixed up. Now. Yeah, I've, I've been in many different lineages, and so now I try to use the words that I hope are as simple as possible to capture the wisdom from all the different places. Um, but yeah, please, if there's something I say and you feel like there's some way that could enrich it, please dive in and say that. Or even if there's some way you'd disagree, I'd love to hear it and clarify it and help it for all of us. Um, so I'm curious now, Creek. Did I respond to what you're saying about goals and vice? Did I actually reflect back what you had said? Or is there more to what you were both trying to say for us to explore? I'll let um, Greek go first here. Oh, thank you. Um, hmm. I guess... Not sure how to respond, so you can go ahead and go last. I think I might have been able to add a small bit more because uh, the the idea of the ego is something that can be used sort of as an advisor, and I mean that's kind of what I was going for. The idea that if you want to become something or if you want to gain it. Uh, you you mentioned the idea of being able to stop in your tracks, and which is a good idea, and that's where I was coming down to the idea of true reality versus you know relative reality. Relative reality is how you see things from the perspective of self, while true reality is being able to adjust that and being able to stop. Would that be described in like Western philosophy as? Objective reality is the true reality, and subjective reality is when we look at it from our own perspective. Uh, yes. Awesome. Yeah, I, th I think always asking ourselves to look at things from different perspectives and trying to expand our own subjective reality or relative reality is is a gift um, if you can get to a point where in each situation you can see the perspectives of all the people that are there you'll be much more understanding and you step out of your cravings or habits and be more free to just say what would what would be more I mean, this is my values here projecting. What would be more fruitful for my life and the lives of everybody here? 
I mean, that's the kind of approach I like to bring into each moment. But ultimately, what you bring into each moment, that's up to each of us. And as each of us cultivates, like, what is our motivation? What is the thing that drives our perspective and our actions? I'd love to hear that over time from all of us so that we can all have a, a, a richer, more beautiful, more positive perspective on life or drive in life. Just checking the live stream. Okay. Um, I have been hinting at this process of stopping stopping all the trains letting the orchestra become still I would like to guide a meditation for a little bit of experience into that now many of you here are part of the discord of this community and you might have seen Jared mentioning this week that he's now at the point after months of breathing meditation, where he can concentrate on his breath effortlessly. And uh, this is uh, part of, of what I was talking about, being able to push stop on the mind. Um, when we try to meditate on our breath and other things are happening, you can just see, hey, there's there's things happening in my mind. And being able to say, hey, I really want all of my mind to be here. In in one sense, that's you've cultivated the, the ability for everything else to stop and come to this one spot. Now, beyond that, there's even deeper stillness. You can start to notice how your mind works, how you see, how your attention, how your attention is here. You notice if you're thinking any words and you'll be able to stop the words and go deeper into stillness. There's there's I'm tempted to say endless depth to the stillness and awareness and consciousness we can cultivate. Um I want to take a step back for a moment. I was just talking about stopping our mind and now I'm talking about breathing meditation. So for people who haven't been exposed much to mindfulness meditation or breathing meditation, um, why why do people talk about breathing? You know, I mentioned earlier that you could take a temple in your imagination for peace or you could imagine diving into a beautiful lake as a way to imagine peace. But we're always breathing. And so people have found that meditation that's focusing on breathing is a way to train yourself that every breath is soothing. You know, I was talking about abstract ideas, getting caught up in your head. Breathing is real. You're always alive and breathing. So it's a way to just always come back to the real world out of ideas and concepts, just back to, hey, here I am right now. What's going on right here? Out of any reactions or feelings, I'm just here. I'm just breathing. So I'm going to guide a breathing meditation for us with the intention of all of those things, being present, being still, being peaceful, watching our mind become still. If you've never meditated before, it's totally okay. I'm going to give the suggestions of just where to take your attention and what to notice. And meditation, like I said, can get much, much better over months or years. The detail of what you see or the experiences that you can have can be profoundly more amazing. So as I guide, I'll be trying to say things that are good for beginners, good for people who are getting concentrated, good for people who are in those deep, immersive, complete states. Um, and I try and say it in a way that every part of it helps everyone. Um, 
That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> but yeah, so if there are parts where you're like, whoa, that's way more far out than what I'm doing right now, that's okay. Just roll with it. Just watch your mind and know that if you keep practicing watching your mind, there's amazing things that you can do. Okay, is everybody ready for a, a brief meditation? I actually have a question before we start. Yes, please. Maybe this will be addressed within the meditation, but it recently occurred to me doing breathing meditations that obviously when we stop and think about our breath, our breathing changes, that it becomes oftentimes manual. And I always kind of assumed that the point was to make it manual, but recently I've been trying to focus on my breath while keeping it automatic as if I was not thinking about my breath, if that makes any sense. Like the physical action I'm not thinking, I'm trying to not think about, but the uh, uh, the essence of it and what I'm doing I am thinking about. Is that the right way to go about it or am I supposed to be like kind of manually doing it? I have tried both and not noticed much difference. I've seen teachers okay. um, advocate for both ways and they have their reasons why and... But I've explored both sides, and um, they'll they'll feel different, and your experience will be different. So, um, there are some practices I've seen which actively um, use manually breathing. So they'll take deep breaths to calm themselves, or there's uh, some practices where. You think of breathing in a square. You breathe in, you hold, you breathe out, you hold. And it creates a rhythm in your mind. There's one practice that I found very helpful, which was to take breaths to the count of three, and then to the count of six, and then to the count of nine. And you do all these different counts, breaths, that sets up a rhythm. And then you step into the second stage, where you're still doing these rhythmic breaths, but without words. And then you step up into the third stage, which you do it without feeling in your body. And then you're just purely in jhana, like the deep immersion. Um, that would have, before I experienced that, I would have said that's very different to the practice I had, which was just single pointed. Just keep your attention following the breath. But that practice was also super good at getting deep into immersion. So all I can say is try different ones and see which ones feel good for you. But the ultimate goal f that for me is to be aware of my consciousness and watching it. So as long as that's your intention great or if you're approaching meditation with a different intention um, it's something we can talk about um, you might notice I often start with hey let's take some powerful breaths because I want to capture people's attention hey right now we're breathing let's actually really breathe and then I let it settle and when it settles you could still be focusing on the breath and making the breath happen or you could just let the breath happen by itself and just watch it um, either way like I said I haven't seen much difference in the impact that the meditation has um, one thing I would ask though is if, if you are doing the meditation where there's no intentionally breathing in and breathing out. If you're just watching whatever happens, if I'm guiding a meditation and then I say, hey, let's take a smiling breath or let's take a slow relaxing breath, is I would invite you to, to try the thing that I said just for that little bit of it because I want us to take a meditation in a certain direction and the breath can be used to shift into different feelings. Does that sound reasonable? Awesome. Um, and for people who haven't done much meditation and you're like, what on earth are they talking about? 
breathing on purpose versus just watching the breath. Um, you know, if you were listening to some artists and they were talking about um, freestyle painting versus watching their brush carefully, it would also maybe sound a bit weird. But when you think about it, you're like, oh yeah, slightly different approach gets a slightly different artwork. And our mind is an amazing artwork and how we direct our consciousness is our art tools. So yeah, people watch how they do it and they get really good at how they work with their own mind. Okay, any any other questions or thoughts before we begin the meditation? All right, so let's begin. For those of you who have had a longer meditation practice, please get your body into the posture that has been most beneficial for you. Bring your attention and your feelings into breath. Bring your consciousness into remembering what it's like to be immersed in the meditation. And just continue to go deeper. And for those of us who are new to meditation, I just invite you to check your posture. If you're sitting on a seat, maybe get your feet flat on the ground. If you're cross-legged, feel the hips and just feel your base. Then feel your spine and your shoulders. Maybe rock forward and backwards and side to side a little. Put a little curve into your spine. And then stretch up and just find where you could align your body that you could just let go of it and it would just stay really nice and relaxed. Pull the shoulders up and back. It's like opening up the chest. Let the shoulders relax. And maybe you notice that your hands came closer or further away. So you can just keep the hands roughly in that place that keeps your posture nice. Whether the hands are resting on the legs or whether they come together, fingers interlaced. Just feel whatever feels good for you. Take a deep breath in and feel your lungs expanding. Then feel your neck and your head. So we just took our attention through our body. And now I invite you to imagine that your body would just disappear. We're just bringing our consciousness into our breath now. The body is at peace. So now bring your attention into where the breath comes in and out of the nose. Let yourself really feel the feeling of the air flowing in and out of the nose. Look at it with more detail. How does it feel at the front of the nose or the back of the nose or deeper into the nose? The way the air flows or rolls probably feels different as it's coming in versus how it's going out. And those of you who've meditated a lot, Letting yourself enjoy the peace and the stillness. 
just flowing in the breath, total rest for your mind. And those of us who are newer, if you notice your mind's doing something else, just imagine that part of you also taking a rest. If you're imagining something, try to imagine the air flowing, just like you could see a stream flowing around a stick. You could see the air flowing past the surface of the nose. If you're thinking things in words, make your thought breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Or maybe even stop the words and just hear the sound of the breath. And while many of us are going deeper into this calm, watching our mind with more stillness, every one of us is succeeding right now. Just watching your mind, observing how your attention is in each moment, and gently and nicely, as much as possible, just bringing your attention into the breath, into right now, into this point where the breath comes in and out. It's like playing a game. The orchestra of your mind, you're bringing it all into harmony, playing this one note of the breath. If you've been meditating a lot, you might be able to notice and tune some parts of the mind. If you're new to meditation, maybe there's some kids in the orchestra that are just being silly. You're trying to get their attention and bring them into the breath. Bit by bit, every part of your consciousness, trillions of brain cells becoming more and more in harmony. Without thinking about it, 
you just notice every moment how you guide your consciousness. You feel yourself learning to be more conscious of every moment. And this just happens as we hold our attention in the breath. If you'd like to, you can go deeper into the meditation. You could imagine if everything else disappeared. Floating in an infinite void, all that existed was your consciousness and your breath. And if you're going deeper into that, just allow these positive suggestions to inspire your inner creativity, but keep your attention on the breath. And perhaps you're newer to meditation and your concentration muscles feel like a little rest. So you can just enjoy every moment that you watched your mind, every little thing that you noticed about your attention. Feel good that in little ways, you'll be more aware and more empowered in many moments through your day. And maybe in some big ways, just that shift of awareness can be profoundly transformative. If you're deeper in meditation and you wish to go even deeper, hold your attention in feeling the breath and hearing the breath. Even while I'm talking, as you learn to guide your attention more powerfully, your consciousness becomes more powerful. And if you're new to meditation, you might like to just imagine having more peace, or more happiness in your day. Just being aware of your awareness. It's a little moment to smile more, to take a relaxing breath, to know that you could think or feel or do anything. It's this happy freedom that you can practice right now.
you might like to imagine being aware of peace and happiness in many moments in your day making all the good times more beautiful more enjoyable You might like to practice what it would be like to just really stop for a moment in the moments where you need to. What that would be like within yourself to notice, bring your attention to the breath or to peace. And just really be that. And if you're deeper in the focused breathing, you could feel this awareness and consciousness Maybe feel it becoming bigger and more present and more powerful. Feel every moment of the breath that you'll continue this consciousness in every moment, whether meditating or whatever you're doing. Just Carrying this awareness and this bigger unified consciousness always with you. If you've been resting and enjoying or imagining happiness and peace. You might like to imagine maybe some moment where you really didn't want to be peaceful or where there was some kind of intense reaction or a bigger version, just get me out of this situation. You could practice what would it be like to step into peace in those moments? What would your brain do? What would it feel like? And as we have just a couple more minutes of silent meditation, you might like to be watching every moment of your consciousness, cherishing every moment that you train your whole mind to be more conscious, more mindful. Or you may just be enjoying practicing nice things in your mind, watching your mind, Enjoying being aware of your awareness. Thank you. 
And then together, all of us will have one minute focused on the breath. Imagine all the other thoughts disappear. Bring your attention into feeling the breath coming in and out. Feel your whole brain concentrating together. Every moment of the breath, more and more of your awareness, feeling the breath. Just a few more breaths. The beginning of each breath, give your whole attention to the whole of the breath. And we're going to continue being mindful into every moment of our life. So as you move from meditation, watch your awareness. Watch as thoughts arise. Watch when you decide you'll open your eyes. Watch what it's like to open the eyes. Watch where you're attention goes, watch the thoughts that arise. Just keep watching your mind. Many of us will feel a deeper calm or a sense of power or presence. Just keep feeling that. And keep feeling that. If you'd like to, you might want to have a stretch or a smile. I'm just doing whatever you like to finish the meditation. <sighs> so my plan for the last part of this meditation is or the last part of our session this evening, is just to open it up to whichever discussion or questions. And if we finish early, that's fine. We'll, we always finish with our dedication. So a little brief intention or meditation of how we can take this into our life. And then we'll go out and have our social time off the live stream. Everyone on the live stream always welcome to join in VR. We'd love to have you anytime. But yeah, as for now, I'd love to hear if anyone has any questions or thoughts about our session this evening or about life. Fabian, could you maybe get closer to your microphone or speak up a little? Sorry. Oh, yes. Sorry about that. I'm a little relaxed. <laughs> okay. That sounds better now. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, what you said. Um, more uh, into the ideas that we have. For example, uh, I, I really want to get this out of my chest. I, well, I am a student, I, I study 
study I want to study medicine but sometimes uh, in late night I, I I'm start thinking I overthink about myself I think about uh, everything I have done uh, wrong from my personal life uh, to my studies life maybe uh, I was rude to somebody or I didn't study for a test so sometimes that well that negative uh, idea of me uh, blurs my my vision my 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 idea of who I really want to be and the things I normally do because sometimes even that same thing uh, takes away the joy uh, the joy of other things like music uh, entertainment in general uh, and at the same time the opinion of other people for example I was very scared of trying uh, this meditation because uh, I told <laughs> my friend that that I saw this, and he was like, uh, "That's a stupid. You you don't need that." But I I think I haven't give a time to me, so well uh, to myself. So I I think I am scared of what people will say about me and stay in a line where everything is right for for the people who who knows me. Uh, you know what I say. I don't want to go uh, to explore things. Um, just because people say, uh, or just because I think people will say that it's a stupid or it's a waste of time. Uh, yeah, that's that's all. Um, thanks for sharing so much. Um, so there was two main things I heard. One was spending time worrying or thinking about all these things and then the other thing was the social pressure um so there's a lot of wisdom i could say about both of those things um a lot of them would be my thoughts which i'm happy to share in a moment but i want to preface it with um, you have amazing creativity within yourself and you have lots of great ideas of how you could be. So first, that's what I want to empower. Um, yes, today we, we practiced two main things. One was being able to watch your mind and be present. And one was being able to practice things. And so when it comes to at night, with all these different thoughts, if you were watching your thoughts, then you could ask yourself, oh, when I think about how I talk to that person, is it just upsetting me? Or am I deciding how I do it better next time? Or maybe I should just be asleep now. So if you step out of it by practicing watching, that gives you the freedom then to ask, well, how do you want to do this? Or what do you want to do instead? And yes, there's momentum. The trains are running in your mind. So it might take a bit of practice to get really good at noticing and then choose to do something else. But I know you can do it. Um, so that's the, the awareness side of tonight. And the practicing side of tonight. Um, Fence mentioned that he also had all this stuff running through his head at night and he decided to focus instead on I'm going to have a really refreshing night's sleep and it will feel really good. It will make me feel great through the day. So that's not a great answer to oh, how did I treat that person and oh, I should have studied better. But actually, maybe at night time that is the right thing to do. Now is the time to sleep. I can think about those other things later. Um, so, to recap, 
what I was just saying. Practicing awareness helps with everything. Just the idea of seeing what you're doing in your mind and not just letting it run away, but always just be like, what do I, what do I want to do now? Where's my attention? I'm choosing where to put my attention and how to think about things and how to feel. That is super helpful. Any advice or th- philosophy I've read that I share with you, I mean, they might be helpful, but ultimately your awareness and where you direct yourself, that's what I want to empower most because you have great wisdom and great attitudes that can help you in your life. So practicing this awareness through breathing meditation and through thinking of yourself as someone who is aware and someone who chooses where to take your attention. I just want to encourage you to just internalize that. Practice that a lot. Take that with you. Um, The second thing would be um, to envisage yourself having a nice night's sleep. When it's sleep time, you focus on relaxation, you focus on calm. Maybe you do a body scan, maybe you do some slower breathing, Um, maybe you listen to a relaxation meditation because there's a number of really good techniques to take your body and mind deeper into rest. So some other things I'd like to respond to what you said is um, you say you're thinking through all these things of your life. As I hinted before, I don't think doing that in the middle of the night is the time to do it. I think there's a time on the weekend or a time in the morning or a time while you're jogging is more fruitful to think through those things. And I also invite you to set your intention. Hey, when I think about these things, what am I going to do? Are you thinking about it and just feeling bad or guilty or reliving the pain? Or are you thinking about it and practicing that next time this is what you're going to do? And this is the attitudes I want to have. And these are the feelings I want to practice. Um, So yeah, reflecting on ourselves and our lives and our habits, if done well, can be awesome. And if done not well, can be more trouble than it's worth. Um, You mentioned a lot of specific things about how you spoke to people and how your studies were. And I bet there's a hundred other things you could say, ways that we could all critique our lives. Each one of those things, I could have different brain programs or different meditation philosophies that could help. But for now, that's what I want to say about that part. Mindfulness, take a positive attitude when you think about things. And maybe rather than doing it at night, do it while you're running or while you're riding a bike, or something that's energizing and enriching. Now the other category of what you said is, what about the pressure of people? I'm glad you came here, even though someone said you don't need that stuff. Um, And ultimately, um, the way you respond to people it actually impacts how they then respond back. So if someone is like critical of things, if, if you are just cool and calm and you're like, actually, that was helpful, um, they're not going to be able to keep teasing you or pressuring you if your response was just really chill. Um, so I like that you said you want to explore things and you want to be free. And yeah, I think you should do that. And ultimately, you'll then have more people in your life who are more worldly and who are more curious. And some of those people who are really close-minded, you'll help them. They'll be more open. You'll have more interesting debates with them. And some of them you might not be as close with. But that's okay too. Because that just makes room for more awesome people. Um, I also want to respond. You said, your friend said, ah, you don't need meditation. There are a bunch of really wacky meditations. So maybe he thought you were going to come and like 
chant to the dolphins. And, you know, some people love chanting to dolphins. Maybe it helps them. But your friend might think that's ridiculous. And, you know, from his perspective, that's right. So, um, yeah, I'm guessing his idea of what meditation is is different to what we did tonight. So when people have judgmental attitudes, I would uh, do what you did. Like, just be curious and open to the world, but also be curious to your friend. How does he think about this thing? It can open up a more real conversation, a more engaging conversation. Um, how is that as a response? Any other questions or anything you want to like reflect back that sounded good? Problems, of course. Um, it's not the same perspective as you said. It's not the same perspective uh, for everyone. So, uh, and as you said, uh, even with the philosophy, the only well, the only person who can make the ch the, the change is is me. And, and yeah. I, I well, actually, there are some really great philosophies and really great attitudes that are powerful and helpful. Um, and I'd love to also share them with you, but like central to all of that is you. You know, I'm hesitant to put out my attitudes because, you know, you have your life and your culture and all your own wisdom. And I might have some great ideas that would be helpful, but first and foremost, I want to empower you. If you come back next week and you're like, hey, I practice mindfulness and I practice these other attitudes, which are ones I never would have thought of, and those ones worked for you when combined with positive intentionality, awesome. I want to hear more of those positive attitudes more than the ones I've learned. And then if there's other parts you're stuck on, we've learned a lot of great philosophy here as a team and we've got great things that can help. Um, sorry for jumping in I just really wanted to say like hey there is great philosophy that helps and yes empowering you is my first in, in, in first priority um, but I feel like I interrupted you was there more that you were going to say no no actually no I think you took the the words out of me that I wanted to say. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Go, everybody. Sorry for taking your words. I want to hear your thunder as well. Mm. Um, you know, I mentioned thinking about stuff while jogging or cycling. Um, I have found that physical exercise is actually amazing for our minds. And, uh, you know, you could explain it with endorphins or the blood pumping and the body being refreshed. But yeah, it's just great. I encourage everybody to exercise in whatever ways you can. And combining exercise with positive thinking, I've found to just be a really awesome combination. Lord Kiro? I actually had something I meant, yeah, I'm... I had something I meant to bring up. I thought they got this uh, uh, sort of a explanation of things. Both of my parents happen to have uh, spinal back issues. And so my father got this apparatus that basically takes your entire body and lifts you upside down entirely. And it's supposed to help with your back at the same time, but it also has all the blood rushed to your head because obviously you're upside down. And I've been thinking lately about trying meditation with that. I didn't know if that sounded like something that might work. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> um, yeah. So from from my time with gymnastics and yoga, or headstands in yoga, um, there's a lot of muscles in your brain that control the blood vessels. 
So um, when you first start going upside down, after a little while, you can feel a bunch of pressure. And so I would recommend just do it for a minute or less. And then the next time do it a little bit longer. And yeah, just don't do it any amount that it feels pressure or hurting. No, right. Yeah. But you will find right. that you actually the get... recommends... Yeah. You, you will find you get a lot stronger with those muscles and you can stay there longer and it will feel good. Um, not just the blood to the brain, but also the stretched out spine. Different postures can make you feel differently. So let us know how it is. Right. Uh, I just thought it was something interesting. I didn't know if that was anything that you had experience with. So good to know it has some possibility in it. And I'm glad that the uh, instructions on the box are pretty much exactly like you said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it's an interesting point. You know, um, in meditation, we sit cross-legged and we sit up. But um, Ultimately, the mind should be empowered to get into any state no matter what the body's doing. But people have found that an energized, dignified posture creates an energized, dignified mind. But I've also found that dance meditation, I can get happier or more alive, easier in a dance meditation. And different kinds of moves will more easily lead to different kinds of feelings. Likewise, in yoga, if I'm meditating on being strong, while holding a warrior pose, I've found it's more easily lets me meditate on strength. Or in the child's pose, all wrapped up, lets me meditate on nurturing and sweetness. And um, I've seen meditations where people do interesting postures to think about different kinds of things. So exploring postures can be something you might want to explore at some point while you're trying different states of mind or different meditations. Um, and yeah, when I talk about sitting up, shoulders back, dignified, that's just one way I've found that's helpful. Um, I definitely don't want to say that is how we meditate. You know, our minds and our lives are awesome. We should explore them. All right, we've got time for a couple more questions or comments and then it's time to wrap up. Anyone? So I have a request. Um, we've been live streaming these and we've been making interactive transcripts and um, I would love anyone who gets a chance to watch these sessions to please relive them and love them. And if there are moments where you're like, hey, that minute there or this five-minute talk or that 30-second phrase was awesome, please let me know because we want to create short snippets so that it's more easy for other people to just watch the best bits. Um, so that's, that's something I would love, you know, I, we're giving this as a community and every one of you can enrich the community. So those great snippets that inspire you makes it easier for you to come back and watch them. It also is a gift to the wider world. So yeah, if you're rewatching any of the, the videos or watching the, or listening to the auto transcripts, if you, if there's a bit you love, Please let me know and we're going to republish them. Um, I'll be forever grateful. And the people who get to watch those snippets will also be really grateful. Um, Shreximus or Echus, did one of you have a hand up? Shreximus. Well, you, if, if you want to go first, you can. Oh, no, I didn't have my hand up. Sorry. Oh, okay, cool. Um, uh... Oh, God. 
I, I, I mean, I don't think there's much that can be said for this, but um, I'm kind of starting a new chapter with new goals in my layperson life, and uh, normally I've, I'm, I tend to be a pretty tenacious person who's okay with, uh, you know, failure and, you know, get up and try again. This is kind of the first time where I'm, I'm like, feeling this, this, this feeling like I can't fail this time. It's gonna, it's gonna destroy me. I can't, I can't fail to get to these goals. Um, and it, it is frustrating because I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be mindful with it, and yet at the same time, it's, it's, um, what's arisen in me is, is quite strong that there's this fear of of failure that is normally not there in this way for me um but it is now thanks for sharing something vulnerable and in um so we could talk through and dissect the issue but the thing that stands out to me most is something like this actually requires something powerful. Um, so you, sh- you said about being tenacious and being able to try stuff and explore. Um, I would spend more time in those feelings, practicing what it's like to be really vibrant and alive and, and energetic um, times in my life where I had some unhelpful thought in my mind, the time I then spent asking myself why and trying to figure it out was actually time I just wasted in those negative thoughts. So my main suggestion would be um, think about the attitudes that would just be most awesome for this chapter and practice them. You know, I just stood up, and I did that intentionally. I want you to stand up. I want you to put on music that you love. I want you to dance. Um, now, I want to be a little bit careful. Is there something happening where you only get one chance? Or is this just a... No, mi- it's, a it's kind of just a you know next stage in my life money career getting jobs i that i are in my field that i want and and getting housing that works out for me and it, that kind of stuff um it, normal you know normal life stress really but mm-hmm. it for the first time it's 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 such a like a, it has to work it has to work this plan has to work <laughs> If that makes sense. Sure. Except it doesn't. Um, Life goes on. Whatever happens, you'll be great. And the more adventurous you are, the more tenacious you are, the more likely it is to work. The more you'll think on your feet and adapt. Um, So whenever you see yourself justifying of like, oh, it really, it's a big deal this time, just remind yourself that Um, you are going to keep exploring and you're going to keep getting better and you'll be okay. And um, yeah, I would just keep cultivating that state of mind that's that's awesome. You might want to look up um, or listen to some recordings by some like business coaches or motivation and career coaches. They have a lot of this attitude of, there's no such thing as failure. It's just experimenting and learning and getting better. And look in the mirror and tell yourself a hundred times, you got this today. You're going to be amazing today. Because ultimately you want to bring the best you to whatever's going on. Um, so yeah, I want you to imagine what that best you would be and uh, practice it. I'd like to see something I think that also up. adds... Commissar, you were you were want, first, yeah. I just wanted to say that it's important for you to remember that the skills you already have have gotten you to this point already, and to not discount that. 
I know that this is a very scary and difficult time, but it's important to remember that you do have a lot of the skills you already need to be successful in this. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. So don't forget your own strength. Commissar, you're awesome. Thanks. <laughs> um, Vice? I was just wanting to say that, you know, this this kind of the concept of failure in and of itself, uh, it's 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 an impermanent thing, you know. You you fail and then you make a mistake. Uh, the the idea of failure is that it's it's permanent, but it's actually not. You know, you you'll get up another day, you'll try again, and you'll continue to cultivate new skills and like she said you already have the skills to have gotten into the situation and if you make a misstep somewhere all you're do gonna do is come back stronger each and every time until you eventually make it to where you want to go you know it's there's this idea that you know it kind of goes to the idea of impermanence and the fact that you're never gonna be in a situation where you're gonna be permanently on a scale of failure it's it's eventually something is going to change and it's just keep pushing and striving for it and using what you gain what you learn from every failure and you'll eventually still get there in the end awesome thank you yep thank you impermanence is definitely um that awareness that things are always changing is, uh, can help us in so many ways. And Shreximus, I know that there's been a lot of upheaval in your life recently. And uh, yeah, as well as helpful philosophy, I definitely recommend pumping yourself up, getting in a good mood. La yeah, put your hands in the air. Yeah, um, laugh for an hour. If you, um, yeah. If you hear a piece of wisdom, look yourself in the mirror each morning and say it vibrantly because you deserve to feel great. All right, time's up. It's time for our dedication and then we'll head out into the field for our social part of the evening. Um, so I'm going to guide the dedication and then we all leave just one at a time whenever you feel like it. As you bow to the enlightened being at the back of the room, I want you to remember all the skills you've got that have got you here and all of the other wisdom you've ever glimpsed in yourself or in the world and know that all of that awesomeness is part of you. So as you bow to the enlightened being, I want you to bow to that enlightened being inside of you. Respect it. Feel it. And then carry that with you as you come out. I'll be there standing to bow. And then once you've received your bow, please come and join me. And we'll share a bow as a group with every person as they come out. Um, and I just ask that we stay quiet and meditative until everybody's joined us. Okay, so let us all stand for our dedication. So, I dedicate this session to the enlightened being within you. I dedicate this session that peace and ease is easily available to you. Let's all feel like this time that you took, you'll carry it with you, you'll practice it. The best parts, you'll treasure them and keep growing them. Just like I gave you seeds for the garden, you plant them, and then when they blossom, you have fruit to share with all of us. You might even cultivate better fruit than has ever been. Not just sharing with this community, but with all the people in your life. And ultimately, when your life is happier and more easeful and wisdom flows from you to everyone around you, that continues to flow. And let's imagine a world where everyone is at ease. Every conversation, 
is kind, patient, loving and supportive. And as we dedicate ourselves to that, it guides us beautifully to making that better world. Okay, everybody, and maybe we can all get together and have a bow to the live stream. Creek, do you want to Short avatars in front. So everyone there on the live stream, thanks for joining us. May we all be happy and awesome. Let's bow together. <laughs>